While you're busy in this world, going to work, getting the kids to school, millions of other people are going about their daily routines in virtual worlds. And there are a lot of worlds to pick from. There's Second Life, World of Warcraft. There are even digital realms geared for kids, like Barbie Girls. Your virtual self, the person who lives in the digital community, is called an avatar. And you can make your avatar look just like anything you want to, from a human to a furry animal or to a way you wished you looked. And, in, and actually, in the spirit of the show, Science Friday today can be found in Second Life because as we speak, while we're talking here, uh, we're actually in two worlds. Uh, if you can log on and find us, my avatar is there as Ira Flatley. Just look for the guy in the sci-fi T-shirt. This is a, an experiment for all of us. To talk to us about some of the psychological and behavioral questions that arise with these online worlds is uh, Sherry Turkle. Why do we treat them like humans? Why do we get sad when our avatars are ignored or embarrassed if something silly happens? I mean, well, because the avatar is an aspect of yourself that you are projecting out into virtual space. Now, it is not yourself, but it feels enough like you that you identify and care about its comings and goings, how it looks, how it presents itself to the world, and how other people view it. You know, to, to you know, contrast, I think, a little bit of what Sherry was talking about, I think that when you look at the connections, whether they're educators, whether it's businesses, or whether it's just you connecting with your friends to go listen to music, the connections that happen, whether it's through Second Life or, or other virtual worlds, are very much real connections between people. And so the questions become, how do you use this as a communication device? How do you use this like the telephone, except more than the telephone, you can go do all of these interesting things together. So one of the important pieces in that is how do we connect Second Life more and more to the web, to the real world, and allow the people who are using Second Life to expand it more and make it more what they need it to be. Mm -hmm. Tara 5.0 on Second Life has a question for you, Dr. Turkle. Do you have a Second Life avatar? Yes, I do. Are you going to share that with us? Uh, her <laughs> name is Rachel Froboz, um, and um, I, uh, I think that I, I would just want to, to clarify what I mean when I talk about Second Life as not being um, the rest of life. I don't like the to make the distinction between the virtual and the real because I think mm -hmm. that if you're spending so much time in virtual space, I mean, that is very real for you. So I certainly wasn't saying that there isn't great consequence and great reality here. What I am saying is that when people go on Second Life and create a beautiful avatar, a beautifully dressed avatar, uh, a wardrobe more elegant than they can have in the real life, a body more toned and perfect, than they can have in real life. There is a certain kind of psychology to playing out this idealized aspect of yourself that we need to be attentive to. We also need to be attentive to the way in which people need spaces that uh, psychoanalyst Eric Erickson called a moratorium space, a kind of timeout space, where they can engage in identity play. And even though Second Life does much more than that, it also is that kind of space, and that's an important part of the psychology of Second Life in all virtual worlds, that they give us a chance to try things out a little bit differently than life allowed us to try things out.